Hi, and welcome to part three in our series of lessons on the countercurrent multiplier. In the last lesson, we left off with the question, how are the osmotic gradients required to reabsorb water from the ultrafiltrate established along the proximal tubule, descending thin limb, and collecting duct? In this lesson, we're going to answer these two questions. First, how is the cortical interstitial osmotic gradient established? And second, how does it promote the reabsorption of water from the ultrafiltrate along the proximal tubule? Now talking about the cortical interstitium and proximal tubule might seem like a diversion from the countercurrent multiplier, but it's not. Rather, many tests will ask questions about the countercurrent multiplier in relationship to how water is reabsorbed along the proximal convoluted tubule. So let's start this lesson by describing some basic facts about the proximal tubule and cortical interstitium. Here we have an illustration of proximal tubule cells, the cortical interstitial area, and peritubular capillary. Now we know that the ultrafiltrate entering the proximal tubule from the glomerulus is roughly 300 milliosmoles, and that the osmolality of the cortical interstitium and fluid within the peritubular capillaries is also roughly 300 milliosmoles. We also know that the proximal tubule reabsorbs 65 to 85 percent of the water from the ultrafiltrate. So from this, there appears to be no established cortical interstitial osmotic gradient, well at least not like the one we see in the medulla. So how is water reabsorbed along the proximal tubule without an osmotic gradient? Well the answer to that question is active solute transport. Let me explain. In addition to the reabsorption of water, the proximal convoluted tubule reabsorbs about 65 to 85 percent of the sodium chloride from the ultrafiltrate. It does so via the many different sodium dependent co-transporters and exchangers which are located primarily in the apical membrane of the cells that make up the proximal convoluted tubule. For example, the sodium glucose co-transporter uses the sodium electrochemical potential to drive the reabsorption of 100% of the glucose from the ultrafiltrate, while the sodium hydrogen exchanger uses this same electrochemical potential to excrete hydrogen ions into the ultrafiltrate in exchange for sodium ions. Now the sodium electrochemical potential or gradient which is required for sodium dependent transport is established by the sodium potassium ATPase which is exclusively located in the basolateral membrane. The sodium potassium ATPase pumps three sodium ions from the intracellular fluid compartment into the cortical interstitium in exchange for two potassium ions. Now without the sodium potassium ATPase, sodium would not be reabsorbed from the ultrafiltrate and thus water reabsorption would not occur. So the net effect of transporting one sodium ion from the ultrafiltrate into the cortical interstitium via these pathways that we just talked about will lower the osmolality of the ultrafiltrate by one milliosmol. In other words, from 300 to 299 milliosmoles, while it will increase the osmolality of the cortical interstitium from 300 to 301 milliosmoles. This change in osmolality by one milliosmol is sufficient to create an osmotic gradient to cause one water molecule to be reabsorbed from the ultrafiltrate across the apical and basolateral membranes of the proximal tubule cells into the cortical interstitium. Now the reabsorption of one water molecule will cause the osmolality of the ultrafiltrate and cortical interstitium to change by one milliosmol from 299 back to 300 milliosmoles for the ultrafiltrate and from 301 to 300 milliosmoles for the cortical interstitium. Now this type of water reabsorption along the proximal tubule is referred to as isoosmotic or same because the reabsorption of water leads to no lasting difference in the osmolality of the ultrafiltrate or cortical interstitium. Conversely, the reabsorption of water along the descending thin limb and collecting duct occurs in a hyperosmotic manner. In other words, reabsorption of water leads to a change in the osmolality of the ultrafiltrate. In part five of the countercurrent multiplier, we're going to talk about how the medullary interstitial osmotic gradient is established. But for now, answer the following multiple choice questions to help reinforce what you just learned. Good luck and I'll see you shortly.